the outlier of this season that it's just nobody wants to talk about is Jokic. But Nuggets out and running. Jokic playing oh, 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 a little oh. give and go with Gordon for the easy layup. We had this conversation before. I could make the argument he's the best player in the world. High is 15, career high 18. Jokic on the cut. The reverse layup is a beauty oh, and a pushed. nice pass for yeah. Morris. And pushed in the back, too. Hello, folks. You would think that with the crazy performances that Jokic has put up this season and with obviously the MVP season he just came out of, that more people would know of Nikola Jokic. But apparently we're still stuck with people not knowing where he's from. 23, 14, and 10 for Big Honey. Another triple-double. <laughs> Sposiba, Sposiba. Thanks a lot for joining That's us, man. We. That's a oh. Reason, <laughs> He's the wrong language again. You my bad, my bad. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I know some of you are going to comment. That clip was from last season. You're right. Okay, it's not a recent clip. You know what is recent, though? The disrespect that we still see being thrown at Jokic. You know what, you know what Michael Malone, the Denver head coach, said about... Uh, the Joker? Yeah. He says he's the most disrespected reigning MVP of all time. Coach Malone actually went even further saying, if you open up the dictionary and look up the word consistency, there's going to be a picture of Nikola there. That's going back to the 2020 Disney World bubble. That's going back to the 72 game season last year and this year. We knew Jamal was going to be out for an extended period, but when you add a Michael Porter Jr. and a P. Day Jozier to that list, it becomes even more incredible what he's doing. And I think part of what makes Jokic's season so special is that, right? The media, I think, some of them agree with this as well. Yeah, what's wrong with their team? 25 and 21. Hold on, the man missing with it, Jamal Murray, the guy missing oh. uh, uh, My, uh, uh, Michael Porter Jr. And here's who he's playing with. Aaron Gordon, Will Barton, Monte Morris, Jeff Green, Austin Rivers, Compazzo, Brent Forbes, who just joined the team. Just look what he's doing this year with, you know, two, two of our main guys down. He's keeping us afloat, and he's still putting up great numbers. Come on, Skip, man. Mm. And he's still doing that? So, I mean, what can I say about him? And, of course, because of these injuries, that's part of the reason Nikola Jokic has been going off and just pulling off some of the crazy stats. And they're trying to, like, send, like, half help, like, or, like, try to send a double team, right? And uh, Gobert goes, uh, no, I got him, I got him, I got him. So Yoke has the ball, he goes, brother, I have 47. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, oh, you're a savage, bro. <laughs> now, it's one thing to score 47 points in the game, but it's another to do that and then also have a triple-double the process. He's balling so much that Joel Embiid might not be first-team center if we had to choose. How about that? Mm -mm. I would probably pick Jokic over Embiid right now. Either come up or you get on your heels. Great pass, Davon Reed with the layup. Now that game, along with the other games during that week, earned Jokic his 10th player of the week, tying him for most ever in franchise history. He's also the third player since Westbrook and Larry Bird to post up these stats in the game. That's a center. One-handed. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> That's a center. Don't foul. And Zubats looked like he was trying to do something out there. Jokic got the layup. It looked like they were trying to intentionally foul Jokic. Instead, they get the and one. I, like I said it now, I think Joel Embiid has moved himself probably to the head of the MVP list. But mm. having said that. I just found it weird that he had to say that before he went on to praise Jokic for this amazing play right here. Five on the shot clock. They double team him late. Cross court, Gordon for the lead. Gordon! Throwing a, a 35 foot pass across the court to a teammate for a game winner and a triple double. Yep. Hold on, go to commercial. <laughs> 49 point triple double? Jeez. And this game was one of those games that basically put the spotlight on Jokic and put him in the conversation, of course, for MVP. But he's been in that conversation this season, throughout the season. But we can't deny how big of a factor voter fatigue is in this season's MVP race. He leads the NBA in scoring, currently the favorites to win the MVP. That according to Caesar Sportsbook. You recently took your annual straw poll of about 100 media members as to who they would choose for MVP. What would you find out? Joel Embiid is the slight leader in this race. Joel Embiid was 35 points ahead of Nikola Jokic. That's the equivalent of five second place votes. And Nikola Jokic was not on five ballots. That's insane. <laughs> At least, to their credit, some people spoke up in the media. 
those five people that left Jokic off the ballot, like generally this should be fired, should be fired. Well, we'll set that part aside. The reality of the situation is, though, Jokic, it doesn't matter how much they praise him. His impact is there for everyone to see. Is he a guy that you look up to? Yeah, of course, he's my dog. So because nobody can deny the impact, now they try to gaslight you into thinking Jokic is not being disrespected. It's often said, especially by Michael Malone, that he doesn't think Jokic um, gets respect. And one of the things I've always said is once you've won the MVP, you can't <laughs> complain about not getting respect. What does that mean? It means that he's not getting the respect he should get. They're not playing that good. They're not playing as well as they played last. It's like at this point, you're trying to excuse all of the bullshit that happened last season. I mean, some people called the MVP Jokic had the weakest MVP ever. I mean, that's insane. You had some great candidates during that season. And it's not like we never gave the MVP to a player that was in the sixth seed. Oh, man, the big fella, I mean, he's the best player in the league right now. Um, and I know that's his teammate saying that. But Jokic, he has a great case for being the best player in the world. He and Wilt are the only players in NBA history to have multiple 25-point triple doubles shooting at least 80% in that game. We all made a huge deal out of DeRozan's feats, but I barely hear anybody mentioning this. This is exactly what we talk about when we talk about players being covered differently than Jokic. I mean, we barely see any footage of Jokic's signature fadeaway midi. Clocks at two, Sambor shuffle for Jokic, yes! But I think right now I'm repeating myself and I'm going to be repeating myself a lot. The media, they're not going to give him his flowers, but you know what? Jokic doesn't care and I think that's the most important thing here. Guys like Jokic, they're just trying to win at the end of the day. They're just trying to play their game and they're trying to do whatever they can to get to the playoff. Where do you stand on this matter? You know, I don't... I don't... I like it. If I'm not, uh, if they don't respect me, I like it. If they respect me, I like it. So uh, I don't need uh, any media attention or any attention at all. I think like Giannis, it's with time, right? With time, they're going to come back around and pretend like they never said anything bad about the guy. And right here, I mean, when you get mentioned with names like Will Chamberlain and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, it's just, at this point, man, you just can't deny the greatness. And it's really amazing to watch these games every time. He goes off on a run. And you know what's amazing to me? His defense has gotten way better. And you could see it in late stretches of games. Siakam over to Van Vliet. That's no good. Rebound on the weak side. That's blocked by Jokic and fumble out of bounds. If Nikola Jokic uh, winds up repeating his MVP GA, that goes on the reel. That goes yes. on the candidacy reel Absolutely. right there. I was very heartbroken when I seen that game because I'm a Raptors fan, of course, and Jokic, he did his thing, man. He really gave it to us. And I know I rail in the media a lot, but sometimes they say some things that I'm like, okay, nice. I'm just glad he's getting his just due. Even though he won the award, I've never seen anybody win the MVP get criticized the way he did last year. Right, you know, right. we didn't just applaud the season that he had had, all that he accomplished for whatever reason. And now what he's doing is validating. I, I don't know that I don't think he wins it this year, but he's validated his greatness as a player. Oh my god, that was so refreshing to hear. I couldn't believe it when I watched it live. I'm mean, like, what? He really said that? But at the same time, did you really have to co-sign that pathetic Tim's dunk that your son made? I mean, oh, that was bad. That was really bad. Who is harder to game plan for? Is it Steph Curry or is it Nikola Jokic? See, I, I feel like this is set up because if I, if I choose yep. one, then the other one, then the, then the other one is gonna have a, a, a breakout night, and then all of a sudden I'm gonna look crazy. But I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go with Jokic. Okay, let's see here. Curry had his worst shooting month in his career in January. Jokic won Player of the Month in January, where he also became the first player to record 5,000 career rebounds and 3,000 career assists in less than 500 games. Yeah, that's a safe bet. We apologize. <laughs> He's not Russian, I thought he was Russian. No, he's not oh, Russian. Russian. Yeah, no, no, he's no, not Russian. Russian. You know okay. he's oh, sir, that's... Also, where did this notion that the Nuggets weren't playing good come from? Like, where did that come from? Because look at these stats. 26 points a game for Jokic, 13 rebounds, 9 assists, 1.4 free steals a game while shooting 60% from the field, 40% from deep, 88% from the line, and they went 11-5 and in those 16 games in January. Like, what? And yes, Perk, Jokic did beat the Warriors. Jokic has it, 5 to shoot. Jokic back it in. Morris to win. Yeah! 
<laughs> this game was magnificent. The Nuggets beat a great team, but it wasn't on many people's radar. So, you're ready to admit that I've been right all along. Joel Embiid is the best big man no, in basketball. No, 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 no. I'm not ready to admit that. I think that. you just said that. No, I did not say that. You, you as much as said that. Did you not see Nikola Jokic? Did you see what he did to Golden State? Did you just see what he did? 35, 17, and 8. The game winning kick. No look. And then Nick Wright had his bronze medal awarded to Nikola Jokic for his performance. But that in itself isn't a really a problem. But then when you see the silver medal, I mean, LeBron, yeah, it was a great win. He had a great performance. But you could try to win against a better team and better numbers. And now the Rosen Gold, okay, now we're just now we're just playing favorites. Really? He beat a Kings team that was awful. And somehow you think that was more impressive than what he did against the Nuggets? No, this guy clearly has something personal against Jokic. He has a vendetta or some sort. What is wrong with this dude? You hear the MVP chants. It is Valentine's Day. Last home game before All-Star. What do you have to say? How much do you love Nuggets Nation? I love it. I love it. I love to play in front of you guys. It's amazing. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. They're 33 and 25. They're one game behind Philly. He, to me, he's clearly the MVP right now as we head to the All-Star break. But I think most people have him third. And that's what really sucks here. Giannis Embiid or Jokic, one of them is going to be third. And I don't see Jokic being that third guy. I, I really don't. Talking about how, you know, he's... <laughs> I mean, Jokic during this All-Star game had a near triple-double. He scored 10 points. He had 9 rebounds and dished out 8 assists in the game. The crazy part is he didn't even play the fourth quarter of that game. You know, being a kid, you watch the All-Star game. You see the, you see the legends there. This was a really fun game to watch, honestly. Jokic had some great plays. Curry was just a electric 16 three-pointers, 50 points in the game. It was a fun little game to watch. But somehow, some way, they find a way to slander Jokic. I don't know what it is that they're smoking. I don't know what vendetta they have against him. But it's the same guy, Nick Wright. <laughs> He's a very good player. He also won... One of the weakest MVPs we've ever seen. Monty Williams, smart basketball guy, was like, what gives us our best chance to win? Jokic, sit your ass down. Obviously, we all know Jared Allen. He's a fan favorite in Cleveland, so that's why he subbed in the game instead of Jokic. And it's, just, it's an all-star game, okay? It's an all-star game. But it doesn't change the fact that Jokic is making history here. He is seventh all-time in most triple-doubles recorded in the career. And he's arguably, if not... Damn straight up, the best second round pick in NBA history. Jokic on another level. Jokic on another level. You see what Jokic doing? He's not on Embiid's level. Oh, you see what Jokic doing? Yeah. 28, 21, and 9. Jokic is averaging 26, 14, and 8. He shoot 57%. He's a borderline 57, 40, 80 guy. 3.5 more rebounds per game Nikola Jokic has mm. rather than Joel Embiid. Three more assists per game and a better field goal percentage. His numbers are outrageous. We've never seen a player like this before. A point center is just as excellent as he is. He is the first and only second rounder in the modern draft era to win the MVP. Okay, And he might win his second MVP this season just based on how he's been playing throughout the first half of the season. He could do it all. I mean, he could pass it. He can uh, score it in the post, shoot threes, mid post. I mean, however you want it, he can do it. And I think he stepped it up uh, defensively this year and also uh, been a vocal leader for us. On. Ivicenzo, just his 13th game. He missed 39, recovering from an ankle injury. And he is struggling to get his shot back. Now, Bones Highland has come up. I can't believe how much he handles the ball this year. I don't feel like he handled it this much. It's like with Jokic at his size and the way he plays the game, how much better can you get? At 26 years old? I mean, that's a pretty scary thing to think about. Like he's just, there's possessions where he gets a rebound and he doesn't even give it up to anybody. He just dribbles up and it's like he's initiated the offense. And Jokic with the block shot, his second tonight. Oh! And he is just so skillful when it comes to handling the ball and passing it. This guy is... Almost like a jack of all trades and a master of all. I mean, 
He can shoot it from deep as well. I don't know. His, his down here is going to be, what can he do there? Come on now. Joker over the shoulder to will the thrill. And he's just so damn fun to watch. I mean, a lot of people are going to say things like, he's slow. You know, he's not sexy to watch. That's a lie. Okay, that just tells me you never watched any basketball games this guy's played, ever. Okay, you've never watched this guy play with such smoothness and dictating the pace of the game like the way he does. It's just amazing. It really will leave you speechless and in awe of how sexy it is how he plays. I mean, I want to know who says otherwise. But how'd you feel about your coach saying that you're not sexy? I like it. <laughs> He's not lying. Okay, fine, you'll catch if you insist. That's where the video ends then. Um, I'll suggest you watch this video where I talk about Giannis and how he's also being disrespected by the media again. It's it's really insane when you look at it again. Like this, these guys cannot stop doing this.